So section 2.6, we're talking about families of functions, and what that means is a group of functions that all behave the same way. Like, we can learn how to work with lines by learning y equals mx plus b, and then everybody can work with the entire family of lines, whatever numbers we see that are attached to it. You can do the same thing with parabolas, you know, quadratics, um, same thing with cubics. Now, I think the farthest away we've gone up to this point has been parabolas, and graph up opening parabolas and down opening parabolas. But in Algebra 2, we also start talking about cubics, and cubics have kind of a nice S curve, like a little snake curve. And then we talk about quartics, which are also parabolic in nature. So we're going to learn a lot about those functions as we go through the year. And what we're going to learn today, Um, works for everything. So it makes sense. You know, there, there's going to be a couple of cases we'll talk about where we'll say, well, this doesn't really work as much as we would like it to. But today is, is the journey along the way of, hey, let's learn this, let's have it down so that when we encounter graphing again, we can do really well at it. So we're going to analyze transformations of functions as our objective. And we're talking about the families of functions. All lines belong to a family functions that are linear functions. So a set of functions in which each function is a transformation of a special function called the parent. Now there's a word there that should give you flashbacks to the word I know you don't like me to say too much. Geometry. Transformations. You studied transformations back in geometry. And you the different times that you, you spent were probably mostly on translations. Um, but you maybe did some vertical stretches and compressions and that kind of stuff. And so what we're doing is we're kind of reusing that information. We just had exposure to it last year, and now we'll go a little bit further. So the simplest function in the set is what we always start with. If somebody says, hey, I want to look at the family of absolute value graphs, what's the parent function? We can say, that's it. No bells, no whistles. Y equals the absolute value of x. That's the most basic absolute value function that you could possibly have. There's no other numbers in there to mess with it. It's just y equals the absolute value of x. Hey, you know what I need? I need the most basic parabola there is. Y equals x squared. No more numbers, no nothing. It's a parabola. It's the most basic parabola that we have, so it's called the parent. So for linear functions, when you're looking for the parent function, it's going to be anything that has an x to the first that belongs to that family. And that means, to be the parent, all you have to have is y equals x to the first. Nothing else. So that y equals x to the first is the parent function for the lines. Now that only helps you if you know what that is. So let's make a quick little graph here of the line y equals x. The line y equals x goes through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, all of those ordered pairs. So it's going to be the perfect diagonal to first and third quadrant for y equals x. So what happens if we put numbers in front of the x? The slope changes. We put a different slope under the one, the slope changes. What happens if we put numbers in the back? They move our graph up and down. So all of those things are something we're going to talk about today. How do you put all of this together so that you know what's happening by looking at the numbers in the equation? And that comes from understanding the different types of transformations. Vertical translation. Vertical means up and down. Moving our graphs up and down. We're going to like those. Those are super easy. The second one, horizontal translations is actually the part that people will probably the first couple of times that we look at graphs might make a negative mistake on. We'll talk about why in a minute. Reflections, we're not going to put those, but I know we will because we'll just show the space where I do the exact same <coughs> three problems for you that I did for third hour and we ran out of time and started doing it for reflections there. And then vertical stretches and compressions, that will also be for you. Now why did I say this one <coughs> is going to cause us some trouble. Well, here's why. Let's start with y equals x squared. If 
I want to move that graph horizontally. That means I have to change the x's. So when I move it, my x has to ride along with whatever number it is that I want to move it by. Now, for us, we would think if this says x plus 1, that it should go 1 to the right. If it said x plus 5, that it should go 5 to the right. But watch what happens if we put that in the graph. basic x squared. And I'm just thinking to myself, hey, if I want to move this 5 to the right, it would seem logical that I punch in x plus 5 and square it. And that should still give me a parabola and it should go 5 to the right. There's y equals x squared. That didn't go 5 to the right. What did it do instead? went 5 to the left. So if plus makes it go to the left, what's going to make it go to the right? Plus or minus? Minus. Oops, there we go. X, so you're saying maybe if I try x minus 5 squared, logically that should make it go the other direction. So that should make it go to the right, correct? That's why we get that piece wrong. Because horizontally, it's always the opposite of what we think it should be. If our graph says parentheses x minus 3, that means it's going 3 to the right. And if our parentheses say x plus 7, that means it's going 7 to the left. So with the horizontal changes, we have to think backwards, but just the horizontal changes. So that's always a good spot to stop. Say, all right, we're going to be perfectly fine with vertical translations, but this one, a little wavy line under there, because I want to remember, I have to think opposite when I do horizontal translations. So down here, there's a little box. And this little box says translations. Translations, you learn in geometry, are also called slides or glides. It moves the graph of the parent function vertically which is normal. Plus moves it up, minus moves it down. Horizontally, that's like backwards. If you want to go to the right, you subtract it. If you want to go to the left, you add it. Doesn't change the shape or the orientation of the parent function. Orientation, you should remember from geometry, that's about reflections. You have to reflect something to change the orientation. And then, if the parent function f of, equals f of x, h and k are going to be positive constants. Now what are they doing? Well, first of all, they're going to use h to talk about that horizontal shape. So that's the right and left one that we're going to have to be careful with because it's always backwards what we would think. They don't use v for vertical. And I get that because v is a variable that sometimes people make it look like it's a u and that kind of stuff. And if I write my v's too fast, sometimes they look like u's. So we're going to use k for the up and down, for the vertical. Now, because k is vertical, up and down, it's not the x that it needs to be attached to. That's why there won't be any parentheses when I deal with k. k will be very straightforward. Parentheses indicate a horizontal shift. So when you look at this, they're showing us that if you have a function and you add k to it, works perfectly fine, moves it up, logical, if you have a function and you're going to subtract k from it, moves it down. Logical, makes total sense. But when it's attached to the x, like those graphs that I had up on the graphing calculator, we have to think backwards. If it's a minus h, it's going to move it to the right. If it's a plus h, it's going to move it to the left. So up and down are normal, but side to side, we've got to think backwards. So they've got some pictures here that show us the effects of those translations, those slides. And in the middle, the red one is the original. And it says, you know what, we added something, and we called it K, so we added it in the back, and we just moved it up. And then we went back to the red, and we said, let's subtract something. And we called it K, and there's K down here. Normal, plus 
this is up, and this is down. So it shifts the graph up if we are adding to it to all of those outputs. Because you're really just adding the number to y. It just makes sense. And over here is the weirdness we saw with our parabola. The red one in the middle, that's normal. The green one going to the right, that's x minus h. And then the blue one moving to the left is x plus h. So subtracting h shifts it to the right. And that's the one we have to remember all the way through school. Up and down is normal, but side to side, that's the thing opposite. So problem one says, let's just get a look at this. Let's get a visual of what happens when you're doing all of these translations. So how are the functions y equals x and y equals x minus 2 related? Well, we just talked about y equals x. That's a super cool little graph because all you have to do is make your x's your y's. So it'll be negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So I want you to have at least two colors today available to you. Um, so grab that bag if you need to, colored pencils, red marker, or now highlighters would work too, I guess, if you do something kind of quirky. That way we can see here was the original, and now here's the new one with a different color. So I am going to circle this with my color. This one's green. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to graph it. So I'm going Got the colors ready? So circle it in a color and then use that same color to graph it. And I like to do this with a few of these so I aim at it. It's hard to draw a straight line for you on sometimes. And then you're going to switch colors. Because the next one want to see what happens when you have that minus 2 go up on the top. So, that one down, come over here, and realize, well, all right, what I'm supposed to do is take this number and subtract 2. So, negative 2 minus 2 will be negative 4. Negative 1 minus 2 will be negative 3. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And 2 minus 2 is 0. graph the middle numbers. We're going to graph x and our new one. That's the new color. So negative 2, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 2. 1, negative 1. And 2, 0. What did we do to the green graph to get it to be the blue graph? Look at that. So if I just slide it down two units, say, okay, well, this isn't attached to the x, or there'd be parentheses. So this is an up and down movement. Up and down works normal. So down would be down two. That's exactly what this did. It shifted the graph, translated it, two units down. Translated the graph, two units
that's what this section is about. You know? How do we know what's going to happen from the math? What do we see? So this one says, what is the graph of y equals x squared minus 1 translated up to 5 minutes? Okay, well, we probably better make ourselves a nice little table here. Y equals x squared minus 1. And normal numbers for that would be negative 3, negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to put it into the formula, we're going to square it, and then we're going to subtract 1. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 squared is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8. And of course, we see the symmetry. You guys can do that in the graph over the place up to see. So we we'll want negative 3, 8. Negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 3, and 3, 8. Now all we're going to do is translate it up. Well, that means you just take those nice little points that you track and you move each one of those points up five and then they connect them up again. So take those points you just used and count up five units. Oh, different color would be good. It's not hard, because we're just going to use logic is what we're going to do. I want you to take a look at the red graph, which is the first graph. This one we'll call x squared minus 1, and look at where it started. So what do you suppose the equation is for this one? Where is its new vertex? So y equals x squared plus 4. So that's our new equation. It's still x squared, it's just moved up. Now, could we have gotten that a different way? If we know that this is the original, and they want it to move up 5, can you see a way that we could use that information to get what's in the green? What would we do? What do you do to negative 1 and 5 to get 4? You just add them together. That's all you do. So if we want to move something up or down, moving it up, you add something at the end. In this case, it was negative 1, and we added 5, and we got 4. If you want to move it down, you just subtract from whatever that number is, and it moves it to that up and down direction. Cool. I can save us a lot of time this year. How did we understand that up and down? Right and left move differently. So this one says, how are these two functions related? Look at this one, and look at that one. What's the difference that you see? Subtracting 3, right? All right, we're subtracting 3. What does that mean is going to happen? Moving down three units. So translate down three units. Well, that's not hard at all. We 
just look for the numbers that are behind everything. You know, this is what they have that's exactly the same, y equals 2x. What did they change? They subtracted 3. So now this says, what is the graph of y equals 3x translated up two units? I don't know about you, but I don't want to graph it. Can you give me the equation if we take y equals 3x and we move it up two units? What is it? y equals 3x plus 2. I'm not going to graph that to get it. I know that if you're going to add 2, you just slap a plus 2 in the back. There it is. Don't even need the graph. So now, up and down is pretty doggone basic. And we talked earlier about how right and left is backwards. <coughs> so that's where a focus needs to be for the next part because it says, the graph shows the projected altitude f of x of an airplane scheduled to depart an airport at noon. If the plane leaves two hours late, what function represents this transformation? Okay, let's take a peek. So this is the original. plane takes off at the airport and it goes up to a certain level and then they say, okay, stay at that level for a while. But then there must have been another plane there or something because they told them to climb in there. So they went up and then they leveled off. And eventually, they had to start coming back down to the airport. Well, this black graph, two hours late, is the blue graph right here. So I think to myself, all right, if I'm going to go right and left, now I have to attach it to the x. I have to, because right and left leaves with the x. If I just put a number in the back, that's up and down. So I've got to attach it. But this is the weird one, because to move it to the right, What are we subtracting? From here to here is two units. So if we want to move it to the right, we have to do the opposite of what we want to do. Right has always been plus for us, always. But when you're graphing, it has to be minus. So it's f of x minus 2. Now, that was pretty realistic because planes leave you know, late all the time. Now we've got a totally unrealistic one. Everybody's on the plane, they're going to leave 30 minutes early. That's never going to happen. But if it did, let's see, it would be about like that. It's 30 minutes early. So I have to attach it to the X because I need to have it moving right and left. This time I need it to move left. So what am I going to have to do? Yeah, plus, again, it's that opposite thinking. And now I don't want to use 30. Why not? Yeah, we've got to use a half. Because notice all of this data over here is in hours after noon. 30 minutes is actually a half an hour. Now, could you use 0.5? Yes. This is a word problem situation. And word problems, we always, you know, decimals are perfectly fine for word problems now. But it's opposite. That's what we have to remember about that horizontal, that right and left shift. It's always the opposite of what we think. So, this is where I have to stop. It is, isn't it? Okay. So we'll stop there too. Uh, just real quick, four, three, two, one, zero. Me on 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 the vertical and horizontal translations. How you feel? Okay. So which one do you have to do backwards? Horizontal. Horizontal is backwards. And I know this says the long hours, but this is the shortened assignment that I want you to do because we didn't get to reflections. So don't worry about first and fifth hour. Those were when I had algebra two last year. It happened to us last year too. We got caught off by the bell. I don't think it was homecoming, but maybe going over all the homework questions on the slide. So that'll give you some practice on your vertical and horizontal translation. And a quick reminder that 